So the time has come to start to do some beveling on the bottom of the boat. Everything that you can see here at the moment is currently square. So we've got the, the keel, which is square stock, well oversized at the moment. So we've got plenty of material there. Same with the stem. And the frames, of course, have been cut on a CNC, which means that their edges are perpendicular to their faces. And particularly in the forward frames here, those are gonna to need to be beveled as the uh, sides and the bottom of the boat all come into our point at the stem. So we're gonna to start to do that process now. And uh, there's a number of different ways that we sort of will tackle each of the uh, parts of the boat. Um, this is as much a learning process for me as it is me uh, teaching you guys how to do it. So I'm gonna kind of get my head around uh, the best ways to do each of these processes. I think I know how that's gonna work, but uh, we'll get cracking and we'll see what happens. So there's a number of different things going on with this boat. We've got the stringers that need to be beveled and um, those are notched around the frames so that we've got these little gaps where each of the frames are. It's the other way around with the keel. So the frames are notched for the keel, which means that that's gonna be approached in a slightly different way to the stringers. We also wanna get our chine set in place. We laminated that in one of the earlier videos. So we're gonna look at doing these little notches here to be able to receive our chine. And uh, we've got the stem to do as well. So there's a number of different parts uh, to, to look at. And um, I think we'll do the stringers first. So let's get going with those. So the idea here is to begin to bring down the bottom of the boat so that we can start to lay some plank in and it's gonna make good contact with all the surfaces that it needs to make contact with. Uh, these stringers are closed off when the bottom of the boat goes on. So we've got a beam here that we've cut through when we've uh, notched the frames into it. But when we put the bottom plank in back on the boat, that's gonna close that beam back off again. So it's gonna make it a really strong construction within the boat. So we're not gonna actually lose any strength with what we've currently cut out of this lamination. So we need to make sure that everything's gonna um, lay nice and fairly and that's going to be in a number of different directions we're going to be doing that by kind of running battens across the uh, the bottom of the boat so you can see here that we've got quite a nice fair landing already but what we want to do is get this perfect across all of this surface so that it's going to receive planking nice and easily so we'll start with doing that on the stringers and um, these are perhaps the easiest one to to see because we've got a notch here uh, cut through for all of our frames. Our frames are going to guide the shape of the bottom of our stringers and we've got that guide already everywhere that we've got a frame cut through it. So we need to take the outside edge of this stringer down until it's the same height as this frame and the inside edge as well uh, to the same height as the frame. And we've already got a marker for, for those at regular intervals. Obviously that's going to change throughout the boat as the uh, curvature of the bottom changes and you can see up forward here some of that is really quite drastic. We can basically use the frames to mark this. So I can run a little button here along our framework. And uh, I think what I'll do is I will just scribe a line along the side of the stringer. And that will give me not just a uh, marker at each frame where a notch is, but a continuous line all the way down the length of the stringer. And um, that's gonna give me a really nice uh, line to work to when I start to uh, plane these down. So I'll get that done first. Okay, so that's an initial rough guidance line for where we want to be for our stringer. So we've got our little markers at each frame interval, judged by the, uh, the height of the frame. And then we've got a line that uh, joins those up. So we've got some guidance throughout the middle of that section as well. Now at the moment, we're just gonna um, roughly bring down to that line. Because there are a number of different factors to consider with, uh, with shaping this, um, we're not gonna bring any one thing down to its exact finish point um, straight away in one go. We're gonna do the whole boat um, all together. So we'll bring a little bit down on the stringers and then some down on the frames, particularly up in the forward sections here where we've got you know, the keel that needs to be beveled, the stem that needs to be beveled and frames are coming in as well. It's not really possible to do uh, any one component all in one go. You kinda of gotta bring the whole thing down at the same time. So. What we're gonna do is just start roughing some material off of this stringer and get this somewhere close and uh, we'll look at um, how things are looking. So I'll get my little uh, hand plane on the go, we'll start to take some material off. 
So I'm just initially knocking off some of the bigger lumps of epoxy that are on this um, stringer from the coating process, just because I really don't want those uh, dulling up the blade of my plane too quickly. So I'm just doing that with some 80 grit paper initially. We'll roughly clean those up and then we'll get the plane out. Okay, so we're beginning to uh, bring things down. Um, as you'll notice, I kind of switched over to my uh, three-in-one plane, certainly for the aft section of the boat, just to get that material ripped off a bit quicker. Um, actually, this little plane, this little bench plane, is, is really good despite its miniature size. It really does uh, shift some material. And up here forward, where we're getting more of a bevel to the stringer, it's actually um, perfectly sized and works really well. So um, that was worth getting for sure. So as we start to bring this down, um, you can see we're, we're getting a little bit closer now. So we're keeping this line in, in sight all the time. So that's our guidance of uh, sort of our, our finish point almost. And you could just use that to gauge uh, how high you are, how much further you've got to go and uh, slowly bring the whole thing down in one um, sort of continuous sweeping curve. Now we're starting to fare off the bottom of the boat here as well. And Fairing is one of those things that's a little bit tricky to kind of definitively explain because it's a bit of a mix of the senses really and probably the more experience you've got with fairing the better you're going to get at it but um, it's it's a combination of kind of basically we're trying to create a smooth even curve a nice flow to the whole shape of the boat and the better we get that now the um, the more the processes that follow this such as planking are going to um, going to run more smoothly. So it's really about just kind of getting that nice fair curve and that's a combination of sighting down the boat. So you'll see me at times just kind of looking down the length of the boat and making sure that everything's nice and curved. There's no um, hollows or highs within the boat. And also even in the feel of the tool in your hand, really, you can sort of, you can feel it if, it, if it's going over a bump and it's kind of segmenting like that. You can feel that there's a high spot there with a bit of rocker in it. And, um, you know, you want it to just be following a nice smooth curve as you, um, as you go over the surface. So a combination of things really, as I say, a little bit tricky to understand and explain effectively, but um, a nice, fair, even curve is what we're looking for. We don't want any high spots. We don't want any sudden changes in direction. And the fact that this boat has been CNC cut and set up on the strong back in the way that it has gives you a really good start to that process. It means that things were already pretty close anyway. Um, but this is the point at which we take out any tiny little errors. So we're, um, we're a good distance long. We've got, a, we're a little bit high still, as you can see on some of these notches. You can see our reference line there. You can see our notches are a little bit high. I suppose they're a little bit low really, but the stringers are, are slightly high still. You can see that marking line there. And then on some of these internal edges, you can just see a little bit of epoxy still on the bottom face of that. So that indicates that this face here is, uh, is correct. You can see I actually knocked a little bit out of that frame there where I was uh, sanding the epoxy off, but um, we'll take the frame down slightly as well. So we'll lose that, that'll be okay. So. Um, Sometimes what I'll do on this inner edge here, if I wanna just keep a reference there, is just get a pencil and run a line along this, this edge here. A Little bit difficult to do at this kind of scale whilst holding the camera, but um, what that pencil line will do is just tell you when you're starting to remove material there. So if you look at these notches, we only wanna remove really a tiny amount of material on this side. Most of it's coming off this side as we come down to that line. 
So we don't want to go too much off of this and we certainly don't want to be knocking a big flat spot out of it in between two frames that's going to see this uh, end up lower than it needs to be. So uh, once the epoxy has gone, you can see there's a bit more epoxy on this one here, which is still serving as my guide right now. But once the epoxy has gone, like it has on this frame here, I might just want to put a pencil line along that. And then as I continue to work that down, I've got a reference as to what's going on. And if I plane through that, that's not a problem. Just draw the pencil line back in again, but keep it there as a reference to, um, to just give you guidance as to what you're doing. You don't want to just go too far and then realize that you've taken too much off and then you'll have to glue a bit more timber in here and uh, go back around the cycle again, which you don't want to do. Do you know what? It's really nice to be back doing some woodwork after all that epoxy coating and glue and stuff. Um, it's quite nice to be working with a piece of wood again instead of just glue. Let's take a look at um, the forward end of the stringer and we'll see what's happening here. So this is a good example of what I'm saying where we need to kind of work everything down together. I did catch my finger with the um, shoulder plane, by the way. Um, when we need to bring things down together. So you'll see that what I'm doing here is I'm bringing down the angle of this stringer but um, now as i'm coming forward with the plane i'm starting to hit the forward side of this frame here now don't really want to carry on too much further because what i'm going to start doing is blowing the grain out on the forward end of this with the plane as i come across i'm going to start ripping stuff out and i don't really want to do that and that's the reason that we'll stay a little bit high as well what i'll probably do is the final um, bringing down of all of these we'll actually use like a, a big fairing block I'll probably go at kind of 45s and take the frames and the final bit of the stringers all down in one point all together um, but yeah so what I what I need to do here with this stringer this has got to come down further because it's got to match into the aft side of this frame that you can see here but the forward side of this frame needs to come in so that that is beveled in this direction inwards and that's got to happen at the same time as the stringer but in order to do that, we really need the keel done as well. So particularly, as I say, in the forward section of the boat, all of these elements here, they all kind of need to come in together. So we need to be bringing in the stem a little bit, then the keel, then these forward frames, then we can bring that stringer down a little bit more. So it really kind of is a case of working the whole thing in harmony. So we'll look down the, down the um, stringer line You can see we've got a pretty nice fair curve there, which is good. And um, we're around about right. On most of the frames now. And you can start to see that following the profile of the bottom, which is really nice to see. Compare that to what we had to begin with. Square stringer to the beveled one and you can certainly see that up forward you can see that following that shape of the bottom of the boat now versus what we had before okay so um we've got that stringer about as close as we're going to get for now we'll get on to the keel next and we'll start to look at what's got to go on with that so with our stringer we had notches already in place where they've gone around the frames with the keel we haven't got that because the frames are notched for the keel not the uh, keel notch for the frames so what we've got to do is cut some little markers in there that are going to give us that same position at each station to um, be able to uh, get our shape sorted out. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to knock the epoxy off the outside of this keel because what we could really do with is a nice center line down the middle of this keel that we can keep as our reference so that we know uh, where we're at as we bevel each side off. So let's get that cleaned up first. <laughs> Okay, so what we need is markers on each of these frame stations uh, to give us 
the shape that the keel needs to, to follow. Um, there's a couple of ways that we can do that and uh, I'm probably going to use a combination of both actually. So I can draw a line along the edge of the keel in the same way that we did with the stringer. And we'll do that just by running a baton along it. But we can also cut notches into this keel and effectively project this line of the frame up and through the keel um, on both sides of the frame. And that's going to give us our shape so that when we're actually planing down, we've got a little guide in each of these stations to, um, to show us what's going on. A little uh, sort of early warning stopping mark effectively. So a combination of the two will keep uh, the, the line on the side of the keel in sight the same way that we did on the stringer. We want to keep the, um, the center line here and that will probably involve us having to remark the center line at several stages because we're going to cut a lot of this away. Um, but we'll use a combination of all of those and we'll, uh, we'll slowly bring it down. So I'm going to get a line drawn on the side of the keel next. Okay, so we've got a line on either side of the keel, and this is just quite strictly a, a rough guidance line at the moment. Initially, we wanna just look to rough down some stock, um, get the bulk of this uh, taken down, and then get to a stage where um, we're a little bit closer. So we don't wanna come right down to this line, we're just gonna use it as our sort of guidance to, to get things fairly close, the same way that we did the stringer. We're not going all the way yet because we're gonna slowly bring everything down together. So uh, we'll just cut the other guidance uh, method that we're gonna use here, and that is gonna be a little slot in each of the frames. So what I'm gonna do here is just transpose the line of this frame up and through the keel, so that we've got a, a continuation of this line basically up through this keel section on both sides. I'm just gonna use a little handsaw to do that. And I'm just gonna cut a slot, and I'm gonna do this on the aft face of the frame because the forward face of this frame is gonna come down, particularly in these, uh, this forward section of the boat, these are gonna bevel in as well. So the aft face of this frame is our control frame. So that is the what guides the uh, size, the finished size of this frame, and the forward edge is gonna come in. That's gonna happen with all these frames. So we'll cut a little slot just, uh, just on that section. Now the bottom of this boat is slightly convex, so there's a curvature to these frames and we want to just consider that with our slot. So you don't perhaps want to continue that straight on, you want to just account for the fact that this is curving ever so slightly. And it doesn't matter if we're a little bit high at this stage, we're just looking to rough stock down and get a little bit closer. So if anything, just err on the side of the caution. Now with some of our other boat designs, We've got concave bottom frames. Um, the slipper launch, for example, Marilyn, that's got a fair amount of concavity to the frames, certainly up forward. So the frames are doing this instead, and that's gonna have a similar effect on your keel line. You're gonna to wanna to follow that up and through. So again, what I would do in that respect is to rough the, uh, the keel down so that you're a little bit closer, but when you get to that final shaping, you're gonna to wanna to follow that curvature up and through the keel. Now that's gonna be a little bit more difficult to do and you're gonna want something that is gonna follow that curvature. So something like a flexible fairing board, quite a narrow one, same width as the frame perhaps, with a, uh, a coarse grip paper on it, like a 40 grip paper that's gonna allow you to follow that shape on and curve it up. Or um, possibly a compass plane as well, which you can set to the curvature of the frame and then cut that, uh, that curvature on. Because this is a convex frame, it's not so bad because we can follow that with a saw and we can get a bit of a feel for the line of it. So I'll carry on cutting this out. So you can see I'm using my saw blade there just to follow that line up and through into the keel section. So I'll do that on both sides. And then what we've got now in the middle of this keel will be a little V shape like that that is gonna give us our guidance. So as we start to take material off and clear the wood around that, we'll see that, um, that shape there. So we'll do that on all of these frames along here and then we can start removing some material. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, so we've got all of our marks in place now. We've got a, a V-shaped notch cut in with the saw at each frame station. We've got a side line on the edge of the keel and we've got a center line in the middle as well. So we can start to rough out some material now and um, get a little bit closer with that. So um, let's make a start on doing that. So as I'm working this bevel down, because I've got a line on the center and on the edge, I can sort of follow that with my bevel. So I want to sort of keep equal distance from each of those at the same time. And I know that as I start to build that bevel, I'm going to be following where I need to end up. Now in some sections of the boat, there is going to be quite a lot of material to remove here and uh, you're going to want to rip this down fairly quick. So if I was doing this on the full size boat, I think I'd be using a power plane at this time to just rip that material off until we start to get a little bit closer. I've gone up to uh, my actual full size block plane for this, as you can see, so I can get things going on a little bit quicker. So there's an initial bit of work done and you can see what we're starting to look at now. We've still got a fair way to come down on the sides of the keel here and um, yeah quite a bit more work but you can see what's starting to happen. We've lost the center line that I marked out um, but that's actually okay because now that we're starting to get a bevel here you can really easily see visually just by the way that the light catches both sides of that keel as it starts to bevel you see that. And you can use that to keep your center line um, just visually really, just work down a little bit of each side um, so that things remain easily. And just a couple of passes with a block plane actually, will, will, you'll see that line just shift a little bit over to one side or another. Try and keep that balanced in the middle. Um, the good thing of having that line initially is that it helps you to start the plane off at the right angle. So as I was saying, by maintaining an equal distance an equal balance between this line and the center line helps you get that plane at the correct angle and then obviously that turns as you go forward on the boat and um, once you've got that plane sort of started off on the correct angle it just kind of follows it really and you just keep removing material until you uh, till you get closer to the mark but you can see that there's no real need to redraw that center line actually because it's really easy to keep it distinguished just with the way that the light bounces off of it and our little guidance lines here. As we get down even further, we'll get to eventually the bottom of that little trench, and that should give us a, a V that uh, resembles the, the frame shape as it carries on up. So we'll carry on doing a bit more, and we'll take a look at it. You know what, there is not much more satisfying than the sound of a nicely tuned plane cutting some wood down. So that is where we're at now. You can see that the keel line is pretty straight. It's a little bit wandery, but um, I'm still working down either side. So I'm just taking a touch off each at a time. You can see I've done that stringer as well now. And it's really quite a satisfying uh, stage because you're starting to get to see the shape of the boat come out. You know, I can see this keel line forming now, which is really nice and start to get a feel for the bottom of the boat as a whole, which is really nice. You can see that shape up forward there 
that V starting to come in those forward frames and a nice keel line established. So quite a satisfying process. So with regards to the status of our markers, you can see that this line on the side of the keel, there's still a little bit of that showing. And in, in fairness, that's probably a little bit too low because I've marked that from a baton. So it's this side of the baton. But um, so we probably always want to keep that there as our guidance, but that's all it is really rough guidance. You can see the little slots that are cut in the frames. They're still there. So we've still got to come down a little bit. But actually in this frame here, you see this example here that we've just broken through that on the center of the keel line and all together by the looks of it on that side. So that's an indication that I've hit the depth that I set with this line. Certainly at the keel anyway, you can see there's still a little bit there that wants to come down and you can see that as well on the side. So that wants to meet up with that frame, but that's a bit of an indication that I need to be stopping on uh, the center line here where the keel is in that area. You can see there's still more material to come off of those. But um, as an initial kind of rough fare, that's, um, that's getting pretty close. You can see the shape of our transom there projected on up through. Still some more material to come off on the transom. And also just bear in mind that our transom framing isn't 100% right at the moment because if you remember, we did some laminations that are oversized. So we've got things like the sides. You can see that these actually want to be sized to that inner lamination. So the sides are oversized as well at the moment. Um, and much the same with the bottom. So we're gonna take all of that down. And as we start to lay planking on this, we'll kind of uh, see how all that's gonna function. So as we're starting to get closer towards sort of shaping in the bottom of this boat, we can start to do things like lay a potential plank out on the surface. Um, this is a little bit thicker than what a uh, plank that we're actually going to use is going to be, but we can just start to lay this and get a bit of a feel for what the bottom planking is going to do. So we're going to lay our initial layer of bottom planking at 45 degrees to the keel like this. And you can start to see how that's going to land at various different places along the boat. So you could get yourself a little piece of timber like this and just kind of run it through. And then you can start to feel what's going on. You might think, okay, the string is a little bit high here. The keel is definitely still too high and we're, we're sort of lifting up forward there. But it um, just starts to get you a bit of a feel for what's going to be going on when we start to lay planking. Definitely with the epoxy and, and things like that on some of these frames still, we've got to come down quite a long way. But it's nice now that we've got a bit of a bevel on everything, we can start to actually see um, how the planking is going to look. And that's going to be uh, quite a cool phase to get to, I think. So the chines are going to be the next thing to go on. And these are going to notch into our stem and as we start to kind of form the forward end of the boat, there's going to be uh, various things that these are going to have an effect on. So we've got a bevel each of our frames, as we've talked about, to, to get the chines into where they need to be. There's also going to be a timber that runs along the um, bottom edge of this chine, which is going to catch the bottom planking as that comes down and lands into there. So there's a number of different things. We'll have to bevel that timber and get that fit into place as well. Um, so the next thing to really tackle is going to be the stem. So I think we'll actually do that in a dedicated video. We'll take a look at the stem in the next video and we'll cut the outer profile of it to its correct shape. We'll start to uh, mark out some bevels and um, we'll possibly start to land some topside battens which are going to affect the, uh, the top section of that uh, bevel. And then we're going to have the bottom planking which is going to affect the bottom section of it. So. Um, there's going to be quite a bit of work to do there, sort of dialing in all that stuff. It gets a little bit more complex in the forward end of the boat, but um, pretty good progress anyway. It's nice to see the bottom of the boat starting to take a bit of shape to it. So um, we'll leave it at that for this video. Hope you've enjoyed it and um, I'll catch you in the next one where we'll get working on the stem. Cheers, guys.